Meow, and welcome to Morrowind Monday. I'm Nighty, the Black Panther Kitty, and I'll be the host of this episode. And we are here in the ruins of, I always forget the name, Tathumiel, Tathuminel, that's the, that's the name, with these weird cultists everywhere. Um, and we were just about to head deeper into it, and in between episodes I was listening to this sound here all the time, and it sounds like some kind of... It actually sounds like a nice beat. But it now now it's slightly different to be honest. I think I think if you turn it some it resets some of the sounds. But it was like dum It was kinda nice. Oh um I can't sleep here, so let's head on. I did say if I always save in between two recordings, so uh, the moment that I say goodbye, I drop a save, a full save, with a specific save game name called Let's Play, so basically this is always where the last episode that I recorded ended, so if something happens, for example, if mid-recording everything breaks, I can restart the recording exactly at that point. The Death Blow of Ever Nanit. I don't know if we have that one already, so I'm just going to take it. Lots of. Okay, there is. There is this Glimmer Ghost, and I can, I can kill him with fire. Oh, okay. It was. I guess. Ectoplasm. I guess what actually happened while I took dam that much damage is my own. So when I opened this uh, 50, this is too much. When I opened this, it actually summoned the ghost. I think that was a trap. Ooh, exclusive restore magicka. That's nice. Cheap restore hell. Wait. 40, that's also too much. I'm just going to take these. Turn, look look around real quick in here if I if miss something. No, there is. I can't take these. Ah, no, the door is Spectre. So this was just a room with stuff inside. And I'm actually going to, of course, head out because I want to sell that all. Definitely. And my mysticism skill increased increase down there. And a little of MC intervention. So now again, we do have some alchemy stuff. Since it's not raining, we're just going to do the alchemy outside. And there's actually nothing in common, so we're just going to sell everything. That's a nice evening or night. What time it is, doesn't say. Luckily, the stores are open 24 7. So, restore health, magicka fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. Is there anything else? I think I picked up. Yeah, I picked up some booze things. I think this is also some kind of booze. The three ingredients. And that's it. My good friend, I think you should. I should have. I should have listened to her, because maybe she has something interesting to say. But I guess it's just something like you should stay. Stay a while and listen. Okay. Next, do we have we have clothing and we have weapons? So let's add. Over to these two. And sell the weapons. And of course, also the armor. This one, especially. This one, this one is expensive. This one I should keep for longer. This one I should sell with someone who likes me most, or li likes me very well. So this, for example, is something that I should wait until he's got 
And until then, I'm just going to sell it to Ravir, who's our good friend. I'm going to keep the repair prongs and actually use them. Same goes for the hammer. Just to train, to, just to train skill. And now there is, these are gone and there we go. How may I help you? Now I'm going to sell the hammer too. There we go. What say you? Mumble, mumble, mumble. Hey, Clagius Clendler. I'm very good. How about you? I'm. I, I, I do have things for you. Look at this. Um, maybe you even want um, th this robe. But wait, there's more. Another robe. And did you did you see that common shirt already? Oh, it's so fancy. You're lucky that I actually have two of them. Don't ask me where I got them. <laughs> that would be weird. Um, yeah, these shoes are also, they always come in two pairs, of course, but not the skirt. No, no, I only have one of these, so this is this is very rare. It, there's only one of them. And now let's head over to our good friend, Ravir. I actually wonder, there is, over there is also a trader. I wonder what they sell. Pawnbroker. They, they sell everything. They also they have 700 gold. So this could be a second Ravir, actually. Um, I wonder if I buy something. 47. Yeah, this also works. Good. I'm just going to increase their disposition by just selling stuff. That's also interesting because I could check if there's interesting things here. One thing that I'm going to try is I'm going to see if I buy the, the prongs. Oh no, now the price is bad exactly. I need to... Yeah, this. I don't think this works. I just thought about buying it at one trader and selling it at the other, but we just, we just had established um, a few episodes before that all the traders have the same prices. Oh, there's two kinds of coin. This one is more valuable, actually. Okay. And I do have weak soul gems that I can fill. And now we're going to go to Ravir and sell the expensive helmet. The Dwarven Helmet, which he, of course, buys for 254 gold. We don't need to haggle anymore because that's already a good price. Now we're just going to sleep and head back. I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. My wounds are minor compared to what? What you're going to do with me? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm already long gone, so what do you want to do with me? There we go. Recall. So we take this. And we take that cog wheel. Now we have 20, 220. Because the cog wheel was uh, 50. So it's the quest says we shall give this skull of gratitude to um, Dangot. I hope Dangot wasn't the ghost that we just killed. Um, so let me see, since there is nobody here, let's go to check. No, that's just a dwarf inspector. Oh, there's there's more doors even. Okay, that's I, I completely missed them. So it is trapped, so we can use our robe. And security skill increase, of course, this is not enough to uh really much lockpick. This is not enough to use the lockpick. 
And I don't think that we do have, this is uh, 50 points. Uh, I guess unlock is what I would have called it. No, it doesn't look like it, so we might want to make an unlock spell that can open 100 points untouched. Let us see what this needs. Uh, we have already marked, so we're just going to use our amulet. So we're going to make a stronger unlock spell, which unlocks up to lock level 100, and I hope that this is the highest possible lock level ever, which means we will have... Well, I would call this spell the skeleton key then. We just have a skeleton key that opens all locks. I don't know where to begin. It is such an honor to meet you. She's honored, and I don't even like her. That's kind of comical. Please, feel free to talk at your leisure. So, open. Untouch. And I'm going to make it... 100 points ch chance, 40. I'm just going to make it... That's the skeleton key. Doesn't work always, it costs a lot of magicka. But still. Skeleton key. It's a chance of 40, it's 60. It, we can use it twice, so I'm going to make another one. With the same effect. Touch and it is. So we have 50. I'm just going to check how much will 80 be, just the number we need. That's, that's um, also two times usage because we have 120 points, but we still have stuff left over and the spell chance is better. So we're going to use the, call this unlock 80%. And now we're going to recall. Now let us see our new spell. And the alteration skill increased. Which also makes the unlock spell more likely to succeed. Let's use the Crystal Magicka Potion, and we get 58% instead of 54. Very nice. Now we can just do this. Take what well, we have saved, so if we need to take another potion, we can just... If we should have took another potion, we can just change that after reloading, I think. there. Just want to check if there's some, someone behind that column thing. Although it should actually be very... Um, that's on Doozy's open door. Very uh, rare that, that there are people here because the doors were locked. Uh, wait, wait, 14. Okay, I can take it with me. Again, these voices. There is something, there is someone, not something that was restore health. Well, anyway, doesn't matter much. She didn't see me. Let's take another one. And drop another quick save. Then we're just going to head in. What's what? What is? It? Oh, it's just it's just. She's just marking me with a sound. So others hear me. 
basically she just calls other people. Okay, he summons a bone walker while going where? Of course he, he hides behind the bone walker. As long as the bone walker doesn't hit me, it's okay. But the bone walker hitting me is bad. Because that damages my strength permanently until I heal it or restore it actually. Not to wait until he despawns. Perfect. That was nice. That was a nice challenge. Of course now I'm over over encumbered, so what are you going to give? We're going to give him let's just give him the weapon back. There. So while I was not knowing what I should do before I started this recording, today I actually have a very good run because I think this is the sixth episode that I'm recording today and I don't want to stop which actually is pretty awesome because not wanting to stop is a, not wanting to stop is a good thing um, I mean the, the worst that can happen basically is that I feel like I need to do a recording now like it's it's, it's an obligation and that would be kind of sad so it's nice that I'm Having this feeling of no, I don't want to. I don't want to stop. And there is a point in time where I need to head upstairs. I know that, but it's not now because it's just five thirty now. So I do need to go to work tomorrow. This is why I need to. I think this is something um, where he, we don't like each other well enough yet. Mm. Yeah, I think that's. Basically it. Well, let's head over here. And sell these clothing items. He he really must be wondering why I'm always bringing the exact same clothing type. It's the same common robe, the same common shirt. Because I, I really, really, really think that these are supposed to be cultists of some sort. Okay, so the cork wheel is 100 and this other thing is just 60 so I'm going to sell this other thing. Let's set aside our rival. Yeah let's set aside our rival. I, I, I didn't know that we had one honestly. So I'm going to sell this to the phone broker just to increase the disposition. And then head over to Ravir, who's... <laughs> well, yeah, he did try to scam us with these fake Daedric weapons. I mean, yeah. And he still tries to do this, even though we called him out already. Which is the single weird thing, actually. 220. Okay, so now we have a lot of space base in our inventory again, or a lot of weight lifted, so now it's time for the recall. And get that sword. So that was Urban, and it was Servan. And then there is this switch here. I guess this just activates this device, and it seems like this will open the door to the downstairs. Honestly, I'm going to drop a quick save here and head on because I want to know what else is here. And I guess, I guess the answer is simple. It is more cultists. And uh, we should have too late for that now. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Bertin, this is a naked woman. This is where we've been. Isn't it? 
Isn't this where we have been? If if it is, then we will see Khajiit, a dead Khajiit now. Or if she has to, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is where we headed down. And then we went straight ahead instead of down here. So if we want, so basically we just went in a circle now. So we could have had this first and then, then went upstairs, okay. And now I'm going to save again. And, oh, the lever is actually lowering this. If I turn this again, this stops it. So we should have done this from being inside there, because this is an elevator. I'm going to wait until it's all the way down and then pull the lever again in hope that it will come back. No, I'm going to load. I'm going to load. I'm going to directly load. Go into the elevator and use it. And then we'll see what will happen. So this seems to be an elevator of some sort. I did not. I thought I thought this actually would kind of turn and then then door or stairwell would open or something like that, but it is some kind of elevator. This is actually very awesome because I've never seen an elevator like this in the game. I mean, he used the, the or actually they because I don't know the gender of the mod maker. They used doors for the for the elevator bottom and top, which is nice. So let's see where this takes us. Goes a long way down. I can't even look up. So it's since we have a ceiling, we can't look upside up. Okay. Well, now we are arrived at the destination of the elevator. And since this took a while, I'm going to say it's dark here and there is a shadow of a dead woman. I guess this is this is the dead woman that we have. I don't know how much you can actually see. Um, do I have a light spell? I've never used light spells in this uh, in this game. Oh, these these voices are creepy. I don't think so. I don't think that we actually have a spell. I know that the... I'm pretty sure that the game knows the spells for that. I mean, we do have Night Eye. But I... So the lights are broken here. Maybe we can find a fuse box or something, although my character should not know what fuse boxes are. What's that? That was that was super creepy. He was in front of me and then he was behind me all of a sudden. Some kind of ghost. The game doesn't tell me what it is. Ouch. Okay, he just he just hits me. Corpse. It's just called a corpse. Okay. It's just a corpse. And we can rest until heal here, which is nice. Okay, so this goes into the hall of knowledge. Okay, should it I had did all auto save. I do hope that, that yes, it is right here. He does some some protection spells or something. Heals himself. And then he tries to do something to me, something. I think those are magicka potions. 
Let's see what he says against a fireball. Not much, actually. That was... And he heals himself. Okay, he heals himself. And then he uses that and he... Does not walk at all. So this is... Weird sounds coming from here. Something's broken or not working properly. So I'm going to try hitting him with the poison blade. So what's the effect that he does? Absorb health and mother's madness and absorb magicka. Okay, that's that's mm, good for him actually because because he heals himself and kills me in the same process and this is very strong. This is nine points for long duration. Okay. Okay, so attacking him up front is not a good idea. Um, he also heals quickly, so we need to find a way to... That's on touch. This would be interesting drain blood or I'm just I guess it is some kind of riddle I guess what happens if we it's a junction box this crank does not seem to me there's another one here This seems to be like a turret. He used a junction box crank. So I do have a cogwheel, but this doesn't change if the crank doesn't move. I guess I guess in the end I'm going to enable them and the power is going to come back. First I need to find a way to get past him. I could just run past him. But then he just can attack me when I when I come back. Because it's always when he when he shoots at me afterwards, he's going to try to heal himself. It's one, two, three spells. And then he shoots again. Now he actually hit me. He should have gone against the wall though. Cylinder cogs. Okay, I've got two cogs now. Let me just drop one on the floor. Turns around, he shoots. I get out of the way. Cog, scrap metal, scrap metal. I'm going to. I assume that this is some kind of riddle. So he attacks. I'm going to head over. Let me see. Oh, I have the... So there's this, the junction box. And I don't think that this, that the game engine actually allows for this. I can't, um, I can't interact, I can only interact by clicking something and if I have the right item, 
it'll just use it. So I don't think that this was the solution. What if he is the person I'm looking for? No, I can't use them. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not going to bother uh, healing myself because I need to figure out what I need to do here. I guess quickly kill them is what I actually need to do here. Um, so I can use weakness to fire maybe. And then use the fireball. Those don't do damage over time. Lots, lots of damage over time though. I could paralyze them. I could use my long paralyze for 20 seconds on touch. Yeah, this is this I'm going to try. This I'm going to try. Let me try to paralyze them. And then attack them with the sword, basically. Maybe even the Jinx Blade? The Jinx Blade to paralyze them even further. I'm now waiting for my magic to recharge. So. That is good. The paralyzation did the trick. That's Godavi Andala. He has a wooden staff of life and death. Absorb health, damage health. That should be awesome. This is cast, cast when strikes. That's actually pretty awesome because absorb health means that I heal. So it makes two to six damage of blunt with it. It's not my type of weapon, but it's actually pretty awesome. And he has a key, okay. He has an unseen necromancer's amulet with a constant effect. Constant effect is awesome and it fortifies intelligence and the conjuration skill. And he can also fortify the intelligence more. I guess this is what he did, all these fortified things. Uh, wait, uh, let me just take everything. I can still walk. All right. Well, then I'm going to loot this area. That was, that was also a nice thing. To be honest, that was a real nice thing. It's sad that I could not use the, I can't use that junction box somehow. But anyway, I'm going to real quick head back and sell everything. Yeah, this is why I want to have this in Amulet, to be honest. You think, I think this amulet says also intelligent, right? Yeah, this increases our magicka indirectly, which is also awesome. And um, see the intervention. Let's real quick check. We only have this. That was nice. That was a nice. Um, a nice idea for a fight where we actually needed, I mean, we needed to think how to how to kill him because I just could not kill him right away. I actually needed to uh, to paralyze him first and I needed to get the idea to do so. So I have just one ingredient, I'm not going to bother bringing it over. Say your... Well, I, I need gameplay basically money in the game maybe so let me continue offering you stuff how about this not so expensive armor piece i mean these these are more expensive yeah he does not take the clothing what can i do for you oh nothing much nothing much i'm just selling stuff 
Base basically what you always do, buy and sell stuff. You're doing all right. Okay, butter. Some selling a glove. He's he's nearly maxed out. And once once he is, I can also say, well, that's just value five. Come on. I mean, this also fortifies intelligence, but it's just for five seconds. And um, it varies on how much. Okay, so now I'm just going to sell all of these items straight away. Is there also any other stuff you can take? No. Greetings to you. Greetings to you too. button and do we have other things to sell to the pawnbroker? I don't think so, no. So let's head to Ravir so we can check, so we can basically lighten our load. He has again 600 fresh 600 gold. So since we're not a heavy armor user we're going to do this. Warm day to you too. And what else do we have? We have expensive pants. We could have gotten this to, to the, we can give this to the pawnbroker too, to increase this position. Um, I think that, is that it? I mean, this, this weapon is actually pretty awesome because it gives us health. So I want to keep it, even though our blunt weapon skill is not that high. But I think I'm actually going to keep it. What about all these scrolls? Summon Daedroth. Um, see the intervention. I don't know these, honestly. Restore health. I'm never going to use these. I know that. Frost damage and paralyze. Interesting. I have a spell. Restore fatigue. Well, that could come in handy. Okay, thank you. So now we basically can just go back. Um, I just read Nurtured, not Nurtured. Um, recall. And with this being back here, I'm going to end this episode because it's been over half an hour already. So we will see each other next week on Owen Monday. Bye bye. The Song of the Alchemists, Ancient Tales of the Dwemer, Part 5, by Marobar Sul. When King Maranian's alchemist had to leave his station, after a laboratory experiment that yielded detonation, the word went out that the king did want a new servant to mix his potions and brews, but he declared he would only choose a fellow who knew the tricks and the tools. The king refused to hire on more fools. After much deliberation, discussion, and debates, the king picked two well-learned candidates, Ianthippus Minthurk and Amphatic Fair, an ambitious pair. Vied to prove which one was the best, said the king, there'll be a test. They went to a larger chamber, which herbs, gems, tomes, pots, measuring cups, all on the high crystalline domes. Make me a tonic that will make me invisible, laughed the king in a tone somewhat called risible. So Amphetic Fair and Ianthippus Minthurk began to work, mincing herbs, mashing metal, refining strange oils, cautiously setting their quadrants to burbling boils, each on his own sending mixing bowls mixing, sometimes peeking to see what the other was fixing. After they had worked for nearly three quarters an hour, both Ianthippus Minthurk and Amphetic Fair winked at the other, certain he won, said King Maranion, now you must taste the potions you wrought, Take a spoon and sample it right from your pot. Minthurk vanished as his lips touched his brew, but Fair tasted his and remained apparent in view. You think you mixed silver, blue diamonds and yellow grass? The king laughed. Look up, Fair, up to the ceiling glass. Light falling makes the ingredients you choose quite different hues. What do you get? asked a floating voice bold of a portion of red diamonds, blue grass and gold. By Dwemer God, said Fire, his face in the winds. I made a potion to fortify my own intelligence.
publisher's note, this poetry is so clearly in the style of Gorfilim that it really does not need any commentary. Note the simple rhyming scheme of AABBCC, the sing-song but purposefully clumsy meter, and the recurring jokes at the obviously absurd names, Emphatic Feyer and Ianthippus Meinthurk, the final joke that the stupid alchemist invents a potion to make himself smarter by pure accident would have appealed to the anti-electualism of audience in the interregnum period, but would certainly be rejected by the Dwemer. Note that even Marabar Sul refuses to name any Dwemer gods. The Dwemer religion, if it can even be called that, is one of the most complex and difficult puzzles of the culture. Over the millennia, the song became a popular tavern song in High Rock before eventually disappearing from everything but scholarly books, much like the Dwemer themselves.